Greetings everyone. Welcome to another Scratch programming tutorial. Uh, in this lesson what we're going to study is a famous mathematical problem called the drunken walk. Uh, and I'm going to just demonstrate this here with the cat. Uh, imagine the cat starts from the origin, from the center of the screen. And uh, randomly you decide at every instance, as soon as it takes a step, whether it's going to go uh, north or south, east or west. So imagine you flip a coin at every instant to make a decision on that. Uh, and when the cat reaches the edge of the screen, uh, it will stop. Okay, so let's see this uh, in action. So as the cat reaches the end of the screen, uh, the, the, the drunken walk, is called a drunken walk, uh, ends. But until then, observe, it started from the origin and it randomly moved either right or left and up or down. Uh, and we're going to learn how to create a random uh, toss, basically, that will tell us how to go uh, uh, in either of these directions. Alrighty, so this is not a very complicated construction, uh, even though it's a fascinating uh, uh, thing to study in mathematics uh, because it's a random process and uh, there are all kinds of interesting uh, mathematical investigation that could be done on that. But again, our primary investigation here is to learn uh, some basic programming skills in Scratch so that uh, we could simulate this fairly uh, complicated and interesting mathematical behavior. Alrighty, so I assume you know how to uh, uh, log into your Scratch accounts at MIT, uh, scratchmit.edu. Uh, so I'm going to just open a new uh, window here. Uh, it comes, remember, with a default uh, character or sprite, uh, which I'm going to call it the drunken cat okay uh, the, the name drunken walk is uh, the official name given in mathematical circles to this uh, behavior because uh, it looks like a drunk person walking around uh, so let me just uh, get the shrinking tool I don't want my cat to be too large so I'm gonna shrink it a little bit uh, smaller uh, here is something we haven't done before. If you click on the stage uh, backdrop option here, you could actually color the background anything you want. So I'm going to just choose a sort of a nice uh, background color, uh, maybe blue or something like that. You could choose anything you want. Okay. And actually, let's make it uh, maybe, uh, yeah, this is good. All right, so once you like that, you could uh, leave it as it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give some walking behavior to the cat. So we can always start with what happens when the green flag is clicked. So I'm going to basically start with that. When the green flag is clicked, what I want to do is, first of all, I want to clear all the previous uh, markings. I want to put my pen down. Uh, you could decide what color you want to give it, so let's actually do that. Uh, let's decide that the color is going to be, I believe when I click on uh, um, here, I get a black color. So I'm just going to basically stick with the black color because it's a nice uh, pen color. And I want the pen size to be 3. I believe that's a good uh, pen size. All right, and then here is something we haven't done before. I want the uh, location of the cat, the drunken cat, to be at the origin every time I restart the game, meaning every time I press the green flag, I want the, um, the, the, the cat to go to the origin. And remember, the origin's coordinate is 0 for x, and 0 for y. So I want the cat to be basically centered at the origin of the screen, the center of the screen. All right, uh, and then uh, let's think what else we need to do. We want uh, to be able to create a random process. So I want uh, the motion to continue. So let's actually do this. 
uh, I want uh, this motion to continue. I want it to repeat until we sense that we are at the edge. We are touching the edge of the uh, uh, the screen. So what I did, let me just redo that again. I went to the controls. I grabbed the repeat until loop. Then I want this loop to repeat until we are touching the edge. Okay. So now we can basically uh, start the random uh, walk. Uh, in order to do that, I want uh, to be able to create a random number generator. So let me just refresh my memory how to do that. Okay, if you go to the operators, there's a, a random number generator. Pick a random number from one through whatever. Uh, I really want to simulate the tossing of a coin. So I really want to have a heads, tails option. So one and two. I don't want to have too many options. But what I want to do is this. If the random number I pick is 1, so if I toss a head, I want uh, the mouse, I mean, I want the uh, cat, the drunken cat, to, uh, let's see, to go in the direction. So I want to change it. So, so let's have actually an if-then statement here. So let's have... If I pick a, so if I pick a random number that is one, I toss my coin and let's say I got a head, okay? Um, so I want at this point to, um, actually I just realized it is much better to deal with an if then else conditional uh, statement so that that way you could have two options. So if I toss a one, I want uh, the cat to go, I want the cat to change its x coordinate by uh, 10 units. Else, meaning if I toss a two, I want it to change its x coordinate by negative 10, okay? So that means if you toss the 1, you go to the right by 10. If you toss the 2, you go left by 10. Okay? So I'm going to uh, put this as my first block here. But then what I want to uh, do is I want to replicate this. So remember how we do that. If you shift click on a block, you can duplicate that. So I'm going to put it right underneath it. But right now, instead of moving, uh, instead of changing the x values, I want to change the y values. So I'm going to bring a change y block here, uh, another change y block here. So if I uh, uh, toss a 1, I want to change the y value by 10. That's good. If I toss a 2, which is covered by the else statement, I want to change the y value by 10, okay? So this is kind of like making a movement and then tossing a coin. If you get heads, you go uh, 10 in the x direction. You toss a coin again. If you get a head, you um, move 10 in the y direction. And uh, this way, you will be able to create a random walk uh, vertically and horizontally determined by your tosses. Okay? This is not the only way to do this, but I feel this might be one of the easy ways to do that. So, what I want to do is I want to test my code so far. Uh, and then uh, I want to add some sounds when, you, when the cat reaches the end of the screen edge of the screen, I want it to have some kind of a meow sound or something. But let's see what we got so far. Okay, it's doing this random walk. It's going to the right or left, up or down, based on some random tosses that I have. And then it reaches the edge and it stops, which is wonderful. This is what I wanted. But what I want to now do is I want to have a uh, meow sound when it reaches the edge. So I go to the sound option while I'm in the cat uh, behaviors. 
and I want it at, when it comes out of this loop, meaning it is touching the edge, I want it to say meow. Uh, you could also get fancy here and choose other sounds. Uh, let's have some sound effects uh, by, um, let's see, it could uh, be maybe some ripples. Let's see what it sounds like. Or it could be bubbles. Okay, so let's actually add the bubbles uh, sound. So it's going to basically, uh, when it reaches the end, it's going to meow, it's going to have some uh, bubble sound. And actually, I kind of like the uh, gloomy uh, bell sound. Let me just see if I can find that bell. Which kind of tells that it's the end of the game or something like that. All right, so let's uh, grab the bell sound. Uh, oops, I think I forgot to add the bell sound. Let me do that one more time uh, from the library effects bell sound. Okay, so this way we have in sequence a meow, a bubbles and a bell sound when it reaches the end. Okay, so let's see what happens. I start again. And then it is doing its drunken walk. And when it reaches the edge, it uh, basically signals that it has reached the edge by doing uh, some uh, meowing and uh, bubbles and bell toll. Okay? Uh, the mathematical investigation behind this uh, uh, programming construct that we have is actually quite sophisticated. You could ask all kinds of questions such as how long will it take the cat on the average to reach uh, an edge? Uh, and that is not an obvious uh, uh, computation. You have to study some uh, probability and maybe statistics to be able to do that. But observe in um, Scratch programming language, aside from all this fancy coloring code and meowing, etc., uh, we were able to create this within basically uh, 10 lines of code here. Um, you're able to uh, simulate this uh, right, left, up, down movement by picking a random number, uh, one to two, in each direction, it's basically tossing. Okay, so let's do this one more time and uh, we'll call it a day. Alrighty, so I hope uh, this gives you some idea how to simulate random processes uh, in Scratch uh, that could be useful in a uh, project, uh, maybe where you're studying probability or statistics. Uh, I hope you had a good time. Enjoy!